Trump week. It's so hard to live in this country these days and, and be faced every day with the risks and, and the uh, craziness of this president. Um, every day something. It's a reality show that covers our whole lives. And I think that people are really, A, they're getting tired of it, they're getting fatigued, and that's understandable. But B, I think they're getting kind of depressed about living in a country where the future is so uncertain and the truth is so elusive. Anyway, okay, today I was driving in and there's Trump on the radio. Uh, and I come into the studio, and there's Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair. They're listening to the same Trump on the radio. We, we, we are on the same page, you guys. Um, what was the context, Tim, of the talk on the radio? Well, my initial impression as he's going down a litany of, of accolades for himself and his administration and his brilliant performance at the um, UN meeting, um, it was almost like a State of the Union speech, a validation of this administration and the, the critical need to keep it in play uh, for the, the nation and the, the future of this country, and barely, barely acknowledging, you know, this very, gra you know, very serious, um, gravity-laden, uh, you know, impeachment charge against him, and he's barely scratching the surface of that. Um, I also noticed that he's throwing the whistleblower under the bus, Yes. And he's throwing the media under the bus. Yes. Classic, a classic strategy to you know it's all damage big the credibility against me. Damage and the credibility of the media that reports this. Damage the credibility of the, the whistleblower that's going to provide the evidence against me. Start you know doing what I can to damage their credibility. That's job number one in any kind of you know poisonous rhetoric. Yeah, at the same time, I have friends everywhere. I have friends in oh, every every country in the United Nations. Uh, they're all my buddies. We send sweetheart letters to each other and all that stuff. We've had all these wonderful, quote, perfect meetings, end quote. And we're going to make all these big deals. No deals are made, you understand. We're going to make all these big deals. And, and one remark that I, well, to myself, I said, wait a minute, where's Congress on these deals? I mean, doesn't Congress approve this stuff? He, he can go off and sail off into the sunset and make deals with 35 countries and be proud of it and nobody knows what it is? Um, wow. Cynthia, what did you think of the speech? Well, I just heard him say that he doesn't need Congress. He can talk to these people himself. So that when you ask the question, where's Congress? That's, that's where he thinks Congress should be anyway. Congress is non-existent involved involvement-wise with this whole thing that he's got going or that he thinks he's got going. To me, I was really surprised by the, the timber of his speech because I've never heard him sound so in control and careful, and each word was placed just right. Usually he's, you know, up, oh, going off of this way, and I've got this and that. And it was, at first, my first thought was, oh my gosh, he sounds like he's on drugs, because he was talking so slow and metered. And I'm sure it was that same, he was trying to make well, it sound. We couldn't have seen him, because we might have seen the teleprompter. But, you know, I disagree with you. We did see I, I him. I totally disagree with you. I'm sorry, but we did see him because he was looking, and he was looking down at, at a oh, speech. Oh, he was. Okay. Yeah. He was rambling. Yes. He was making all kinds of strange characterizations about yes. people. Uh, as Tim said, he was attacking everybody who isn't mm -hmm. on his team. He was talk talking about his cabinet and, uh, well, those in his cabinet who were the biggest stooges in his cabinet. He was talking about Larry Kudlow. That's my favorite. His economic what what advisor what um, and he was he was talking about them in first name in first name like it's a family we love right. each other you know um, we hate anyone who doesn't agree with us but we love love each other I also felt that he was repeating himself mm -hmm. um, I also felt that rather than it being a state of the union message it was a pure political appeal to his base but let's talk about that. I mean, so he has serious problems. Um, there isn't any media, including Fox News, that doesn't understand he has serious problems. They may find different issues than CNN and MSNBC, but serious problems. So here's Trump coming out of the box. First thing is he spends time at the UN. Um, you know, I, I, find that, I find that fairly remarkable because, you know, the UN, UN is all about climate change and climate action on climate change. And he gave that one 12 minutes or something. Um, you know, this is all political for him. But the question is, isn't this what's happening in the last two, now three days of his machinations at the UN? 
Um, isn't this all a response to his problem with the, with the uh, whistleblower? Uh, what is he doing here, and how does he intend it should affect the national public opinion on, on whistleblowing and impeachment? Impeachment. Yesterday, impeachment. Well, since this program first went on the air, and certainly years before that, um, what has come out of our mouths time and time again is his ability to distract the silver shiny object. This speech is nothing more than a distraction trying to divert attention away from the seriousness of this impeachment vote, or excuse me, the impeachment inquiry. And the bottom line is we know how good he is on distraction, and I've got 14 points right out of the gate on this speech to distract us from this seriousness, the seriousness of this impeachment inquiry. Were, were the points he made true? I kept thinking, wow, the newspapers well, are going to have a good time with this. Uh, you know, in, in truth versus lies, they're well, going to be able to find a lot of lies in there. Well, here's the one I like is that, you know, there, there's no president but me that has changed things around and make America number one. And the people will need to realize that if I'm not around or whoever the next president will be number two or number three. He said, I have brought trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars into our economy. China has lost trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars and lost millions and millions of jobs. Um, this is hyperbole at its finest. It's not true. It's not, not true. true. That's what hyperbole it's a, it's is. It's a great lie. And, and there are people out there, I hate to say this, whose educations take them to believe what he says. They believe it. They accept it. And you this know, is a, I heard one lie after another. I hope the Washington Post, he called them the Amazon Washington Post. I love that. <laughs> Conflating everything about everybody. Right. They're all bad. They're all in a conspiracy against me. Right. Just another, you know, witch hunt against me. And it's a hoax, he said. How right. do you react to that? I mean, what, what do you see from all of this as his MO in dealing with the crisis he has on his plate right now? Well, right now I see him providing cover for the fact that Rudy Giuliani was in Ukraine and was poking around and... He has no reason to be. Now, suddenly he says he was sent by the state, and the state does not support that. So they're trying to make it that he's there for a different reason. He's there to investigate the Russia hoax. And so it's like he's just trying to provide cover for things that are going to be coming down the pipe in, that he can see. So many doubt. lies. This so reminds lies. me of the discussion that Jared had about adoptions. Right. Options in yeah, Russia. Right. It's a lie. It's you know, you have to be a fool to accept it. And um, I don't, you know, there are people who will accept it. I'm sorry to say in this country, but the press, at least the press I read, will not accept it. He's going to get called on it. Let's look at historical perspectives. When Richard Nixon was at, you know, towards the end of his presidency, um, the approval rating for Richard Nixon was 38 percent, 39 percent from the American public. So this will be no different. Donald Trump will have his 35 to 40 percent loyal base. It doesn't matter if he's caught sh shooting someone down on Fifth Avenue. Um, he will have a continued loyal base. So let's not be surprised on his support. No, I mean, you know, I there was agree. a piece uh, recently, the last couple of days, about how his uh, ratings have gone up, his base ratings, his base numbers have gone up, uh, which is very, very troubling to me. Well, he made because a quote it means on that. He's reaching them, uh, and he's, in, he's, he's sort of making it come true that if you get if you get impeached, if you are facing impeachment, there, there are more people that like you. You can capitalize on it and make yourself even more popular. Incredible demagoguery. Yes. Yeah. Well, his quote here on, during the speech was, any poll you see about Donald Trump, add another 10 points on top of it. He goes, I don't know how that happens, but it does happen, and it's happened for me. Um, you know. <laughs> So he's, you know, he's conflating numbers. He's, he's creating a reality out of the ethereal atmosphere. And I don't know how he gets away with it, but he seems to be pretty successful. So he's getting away with well, it. Well, let's see what happens in California. California, he's withholding billions uh, from their public works project that were already appropriated, already in the pipeline. Um, now he's withholding because he's mad at them. He's mad at them. Does this sound like the manipulation that's going, that did go on, is going on? In Ukraine, is it, you know, it's, it's playing with money, manipulating people, using money, dangling carrots and sticks. Uh, by the way, $391 million. These events took place 90 days ago with, with the whistleblower. Right. They still didn't get the money. Yeah. 
Well, the conversation. Like they haven't come through. They haven't. Well, I mean, listen to the transcript or the conversation. One minute, the um, you know they're talking about miss anti tank missiles, and then Donald breaks into, you could do a favor for us. You know, you could do a favor for us. We the United States been very good to you. Not so much Ukraine good for us. And you know, the president says from Ukraine says, well, we buy your oil. I mean, this is like something out of the Godfather one movie. Right. It's out, it's out of the Michael Cohn testi testimony. Yeah. If you remember, he said in so many words, Trump never told you specifically what to do, but he found a way to communicate it to you by innuendo. And he, he went through a whole MO thing about how Trump works. Right. And it's replaying right now in that whistleblower complaint. By the way, we have a summary of the telephone call, one telephone call. There was apparently another one. Trump said he'd make the first one available. I'm interested. A summary, though. It's a summary by the people who were listening in on the line, and I guess they write it down. It's imperfect. Um, where's the tape? Where's the actual? We've been talking about transcripts now for three days or more since the weekend. Um, where, where's the transcript? We have a summary. We don't have the transcript. Here we go again. Here we go again. Thank you. <laughs> Took the words out of my mouth. That's exactly right. Yeah. And then you think about all the different reasons that they have and the different committees. Once Nancy finally came out and said, yes, this is a formal impeachment inquiry. You know why she did that, by the way? Why do you think she, she did She was it? listening to us here at Trump Week. Is that what she it was? Because we've been got like, wow. message. Yeah. <laughs> she, <laughs> thinking it out, that's why. Yeah, there we go. Help you understand our influence. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Even I though do. I was slow coming to the party? Yes, she right. was even though you were still coming to the party, we finally wore you down and brought you around. So what, what made her turn? I, I think she was waiting for just the, the next big thing that she could use, I really, is what I think she was waiting for. Because they were still going on with, she was supporting all the investigations, she wasn't holding anything back, she was saying she wanted to see him in shackles, you know, I mean, she was not being light on him at all, but I think she was waiting or more groundswell from the people, and I think this brought it up for her a little bit. What for me, think? it's very clear. This was easy to understand. It's right. short, it's sweet, it's simple, it's easy to understand, and people can see a black or white situation here right. versus the Mueller report, 400 plus pages, convoluted. Right. Um, no one ever read it, really, the report, and bottom line is, this was something they can get their arms around and say, this is a clear abuse of power, presidential power. This is a violation of his oath of office. And we can do this in one page. Right. If you get a chance, read Frank Bruni in today's Times. His, uh, he has a newsletter, but he's also in the Times. He has a really wonderful uh, opinion piece on this. One of the things he said, one of the things he talked about was the, the Mueller report and how it really didn't get home. It didn't have any effect on anybody outside of the people, you know, who, who's, who would always have seen it as an attack on Trump. The people who didn't see it, people who liked Trump, were not affected at all. So it really didn't have the effect we hoped that it would have. This, as you say, Tim, this may have that, it may have that effect. Um, so we didn't, we, didn't get the, uh, we, didn't, we didn't get the transcript. And there was something in the summary that said, this may not be accurate, um, which I found very interesting. Uh, and then we didn't get the first transcript of the first call or a summary of the first call. Trump said he would do that. Um, and then we haven't seen the whistleblower complaint yet. They're, no. still, they're still stonewalling. We don't have it yet. Maybe today, somehow, I don't know. The guy's supposed to testify well, in Congress. The whistleblower wants to come forward, he, himself even. And he's tried to go through formal channels to make it happen in a safe way. And they're blocking him at every, at every turn. Well, they're not giving him the information yeah. that he needs. In this speech, this press conference that just took place, um, the sixth point was, I have instructed everyone to be totally transparent on the release of these transcripts, but I also want Joe Biden and his son to be transparent on all the millions and millions of dollars he's gotten out of the Ukraine, and the millions of dollars he's gotten out of China. So he has coupled this uh, agreement to be transparent, and I don't know if it's a quid pro quo with, um, I want to see what the Bidens come up with. I don't know if he's trying to strategize it that way, or he's actually going to not stand in the way to have this That's transcript released. That's what a Demagogue released. does. As soon yeah. as you find him out, he turns it back on you, and he says, no, you think I did something wrong? Look at what they did. Correct. 
you know, changing the focus. That's what and he that's always part does of it. his across-the-board defense here. I mean, if we isolate, let's take a moment and isolate all the things he's doing. One is he still is stopping. One is we don't have the, the actual transcript or recording. Two is, uh, it's there, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, two is we don't have the, the whistleblower report, and we, don't, we haven't heard from the whistleblower. Um, three is, uh, and this just came out, I don't know if you guys heard this, but the national intelligence person, uh, the national D N D the DNI, DNI um, said to the Washington Post that he was going to quit uh, if Trump you know, forced him to change anything in, in, his, in his action on the whistleblower. He was going to quit. Uh, and this was published this morning, or yeah, I think it was this morning. In Trump's speech, you caught that. What did he say? He said, this is a total fabrication from the, the media. He never would ever quit. He would never resign. And he is loyal, and he's not, that's not what he does. Well, he got the guy to write up this paragraph saying, oh, no, no, I would never quit. I'm not a quitter. Yeah, and, and that's what uh, he I'm announced. Loyal, I'm loyal that's what to he the announced president. His, yeah. And you know, you know that's part of the defense, you know, the defense strategy here. You compromise that guy. Now he's of questionable, I mean, who, said, who knows what he said? But um, he's of questionable credibility now. Mm -hmm. He's on the one side, he's on the other side. Um, so it's, it's mushing, it mushing things up. Um, as you said, he's, he, he, turns, he turns the criticism that he's getting back on those who criticize him. He always does that. One of the first he questions. Has a meeting, yeah, okay. He has a meeting with the president of Ukraine uh, at the UN this morning, and it's all kissy face. Um, and he goes to see these 30, 35, 40 people and, and, and claims that he's got re great relationships. Um, and he makes this speech today. I, I'm sure I'm not catching it all, but you can see a strategy emerging mm -hmm. uh, in desperation uh, about what is happening to him, right. what Nancy is doing, what Congress is doing, or at least the House is doing. And, you know, this is never, to your point, this has never happened before. He's never reacted like this. He's in full tilt route right now. And you can see it by the desperation of all these moves. We can see it anyway, and the newspapers, mm -hmm. the good ones, can see it. Uh, I'm not sure that the, the base can see it. They're going to believe what he has to say. So, USA. Um, I was going to say something about the, the whistleblower thing, that we don't know for sure what's in the whistleblower's complaint. Right. We don't know if it's about this one call, if it's about more than just this one call. Maybe it's a pattern of behavior that the whistleblower has seen. Right? And, I, and he doesn't know that yet either, does he? Or does, I'm sure he knows it. He must know it by now, right? Sure, so, that's why he's so desperate. Right. And, and he probably got the attorney general all over it, Barr, our friend. Right. Uh, and, and who knows what we're going to get instead of that. We don't have it yet. And it's still being held under wraps. It should have been transmitted to Congress a long time ago. Right. This was filed weeks and weeks and weeks, weeks ago, ago. It's not months. The day after Mueller appeared in the Congress. Right. But the, yeah, so where I was going with that is we don't know for sure what it is, but Trump did release that little bit saying, well, when, right after the, the president of Ukraine, um, uh, Zelensky, President Zelensky asked for extra missiles, anti-tank missiles, the very next thing that Trump says, and he's the one who released this, which is what doesn't make a little bit of sense to me. Um, it, he says, okay, well, we need a favor. You need to look up these guys. You need to go after the Hillary emails, and you have to go after Biden. In the very next response to when he says, and this is what Trump has released to us yeah. as the transcript. And, and the context is interesting because he had already held the money up. I forget how long, a week or two or something. He already held it up, and, and the Ukrainians were saying, what, what happened to the money? Oh, money? We're supposed yeah. to get to the money. I mean, the, um, right. everybody you know, in Congress and everybody in the government said, we're going to get the money. They don't get the money. And it's that context where this telephone call takes place. Right. Yeah. And Trump called him. Trump called him. Right. So obviously there was a message. You know, right. the, the words of Michael Cohn ring in my ears. The innuendo is so, so clear. Fair. Right. What he wanted out of this. Well, guy. you used a term, and it's actually a very a term used when it comes to rhetoric and persuasion. That is um, dangling carrots, hanging swords, yeah. and that call was one in both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, here's yeah. the carrot. There's your money. Uh, the sword is, you're not going to get the money unless I you help me out. If you do this favor for me, I need a favor from you. Very specifically, yeah. so, use those words. So there's a there's a system going. There's a procedure going. What has to happen before you get to impeachment? 
um, then some, some committee meetings, and, uh, and then somebody has to draft articles of impeachment. Mm -hmm. uh, and the House Judiciary, I think, has to look at it. Uh, and then it goes to the full, full vote on the floor. Right now, there are not quite the necessary votes. Five short. Five it's 213, short. and it needs to be Who wants to be the last short. guy not That's to vote for it? Or did it go up again in one more number after I looked at, at it? Yeah, when, yeah no. recently. I won this morning. Turned. Yeah. So yeah. it's close now, and you know the momentum is obviously going that direction. And Trump isn't going to stop. Trump is campaigning like crazy. And we haven't seen all of his strategical moves yet. There'll be distractions, I, you know, as you said, there'll be mm -hmm. distractions, I guarantee, oh, yeah. to try to get the subject to change. You know, he knows the news cycle changes every, what, 24, 48 hours, and he's going to try to change it with something else. You'll say, I made my statement at the United Nations, I made this long-winded, rambling speech with all the lies and the obfuscations. Um, now, I've made my statement. Let me see if I can distract them with something else bigger and better. Who knows? Watch, watch what happens. Iran? <laughs> watch what happens. Something else. The fight with San Francisco, with California? Something. Well, you know, in the speech, he goes with that raw meat thing. It's not just, you know, specific issues. He was talking about the wall and how great the wall is. He's doing oh, 400 right. miles with the wall. He hits something again that goes to the heart of America, America and the Americans. And that doesn't matter if you're Republican, Independent, or Republicans. And that is, I'm the one who's going to, I'm the one who's going to preserve your freedom. The, uh, the, the Democrats have forgot about the American people. I won't forget about the American people. So he's hitting really hard on these, these nerves. And, yeah, and, and he's saying, and you're preventing me from uh, protecting the American people by bringing up these, these allegations of, you know, of my impropriety and, and impeachment inquiry. Yeah, and he's right. blaming them for what they should be blaming him for. I mean, this is a, you they, know, mom and apple pie stuff going on here. Yeah. When they asked him, hit one of his first questions after his long rambling speech, right, was a very specific, what about this whistleblower? What does this mean? Do you think it's right for a president to behave in this way? And he immediately says, well, Obama did it. That was the very first thing out of his mouth. Was, well, Obama did it. And it's like, no, he didn't. <laughs> but, you know, that, like you said, turns it on. Out. Well, I, I'm, I'm very concerned uh, that uh, he's going to be relentless about this, yes. and he's going to be focused about it, and he knows how to play the press, he knows how to play his base, and he could actually uh, escape this. It's possible. Um, on the other hand, there seems to be plenty of momentum going now, and if Nancy can just hold it together, if those four or five people you know, in the House can hold it together, and they, they draft articles of impeachment that are worthy, uh, and meet, you know, public opinion, or at least um, rouse public opinion, then we could have a House impeachment. That would be really interesting. And, and, then, and the Republicans will be tested. The Republicans, by the way, and this is another part of Trump's, Trump's uh, strategy, including your friend Mitch McConnell. Um, My friend? Oh, said, no, no. Yes, Sorry. let's give him this summary. Y right. Yes, right. let's give him the documents. Really, w when did they do that before? They, they've, been, they've been holding stone everything. Stonewall, 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 Stonewall yeah. everything. All of a sudden on this, well... Clearly, that's part of Trump's strategy, mm -hmm. right? Let's soften it up. Let's make the Republicans look good, and then we'll, you know, be able to uh, exactly. soften soften the public opinion. But I, but I wanted to get to uh, I wanted to get to uh, one other thing about this. Um, you know, nevertheless, while this is all going on, uh, and it was in his speech, and it will be these things will be on the flip side in those articles mm -hmm. of impeachment. You know, I doubt. I mean, they've been. Thinking about these articles for a long time, there have been smart guys drafting these articles. These articles are not going to be just about this event with the whistleblower. Oh, yeah. um, they're, they're going to be about a lot of things that are, you know, not consistent. Emoluments. With Emoluments, yeah, we both start listening. Emoluments is a good one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was about 10 of them, then we could just this, go right At least half a dozen come to mind yes. right away. I mean, solid. Not, mm -hmm. solid. not just speculative, solid. Right. And so those articles are going to be, you know, raising all the issues or all the major issues that we've been dealing with here on Trump Week and you know, right-thinking people in the country, I must say. Right. Meanwhile, and this is the point I wanted to ask you about, meanwhile, Trump hasn't stopped doing his, his, his craziness. I mean, here we are with heat waves and climate change and, every, and, and the threat of it. Here we are with uh, Greta Thunberg. Right. Uh, making that fabulous speech. Isn't that great? It was great. Uh, uh, how dare well, you, as how, she they, says, how dare, how dare you? you? I loved the that. The troubling about the speech, by the way, footnote, is that they applauded. 
it would have been better if they were silent. You know, and I'm, yeah, applaud me. Uh, and you guys can do the same things you've been doing all along. I'm, I'm glad you appreciate me, but how about doing something? Yeah. Um, and she didn't reach Trump at all. There was this really incredible picture of Trump ignoring her mm -hmm. and her giving him stink eye at the United Nations. That was stink but eye. I, I saw that, uh, too. You want to see definite stink eye? Put <laughs> that, that picture in the dictionary. I don't know if the base realizes it, but he 16 year old is, stink eye. as the leader, yeah. as the president of the United States, plus the, you know, the functional leader of the, of the world, um, he has ruined mm -hmm. uh, global attempts to uh, deal with climate change. Yeah. And, you know, China's not doing anything. India's not doing anything. Uh, a lot of the countries in NATO are not doing anything um, because he has discouraged, he put it down lower on the priorities. Nobody cares. Nobody right. wants to spend the money. And so what we have is stasis on climate change. That's just one thing. When you think about all the other environmental uh, oh, yeah. and regulatory and um, social safety net things that he's doing every day while this is going on, mm -hmm. you know, in the United Nations, yeah. He's been really busy. You really look at it, it's like he has popularized that taking care of this planet, be it water, air, anything, um, is a very liberal thing to do. And why would any good conservative Republican ever want to be part of that? So he's really polarized taking care of the planet as a, a, a liberal activity. Yeah. And Dems. It's, it's yeah. a Dem thing. Yeah. You know? And all this, uh, I don't know, how does this fit? Is against uh, you know Biden's uh, popularity and Biden's possibility of winning. Does it help him? Uh, I'm not sure that it does. And and does it help uh, any of the others? I think it might help um, Elizabeth Warren. And Elizabeth Warren came out of Iowa above Biden. And my own opinion is I think that Biden is too good of a man. He's got too much class to raise to the level of. What it's going I don't think he would do well head to head with Trump. I think that Elizabeth Warren would do better against him because I think she's got more power as a woman, and I don't think she would um, I don't know, I guess she wouldn't balk at some of the things that he says. I think she'll just charge mm -hmm. right in, whereas I think Biden would be like, oh man, I, I'm not even going to lower myself to that place. You know what I mean? And yeah, I, so and how I do don't, you deal with a, with a psychopathic how, person? Exactly. How do you deal with a psychopathic person? I don't know. Usually, so, you want to get away from him. It's very hard to deal head on with him. What do you think? Right. Boy, I've got, I mean, I literally have so many thoughts going on in my mind right now. And, and I'm back in the context of this whole how rapidly this impeachment inquiry has taken place for where we were a week and a half ago. Right. Or a week ago. Um, I don't know about you two, but I felt profound sadness. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a sad day for us to be in this position right now. And what makes it sad for me is that the guardrails, even though they've been there, they haven't been utilized by our Congress. And that means Democrats, too. I know they've stood up and they've, you know, they've shouted, but not enough. And what worries me is, you know, we're looking at situations that we don't want any president to be in. And that is, a president should be able to have a conversation with a world leader and, and, and not have those transcripts, you know, out there. Because that's going to inhibit all world leaders to talk with our president if you know that every transcript is going to be available. But here we are, and, and it's required and it's necessary now to have this transcript uh, given to us and, and examined. And that's a sad day for this country and the, our government. Well, it's I a sad day. I don't think it means that they have to get every, you know, transcript. Just the one that came from the whistleblower, that, that, belong, that the whistleblower has no, called attention to. Tim's right. This changes but once you, things. Yeah, once you set that precedent, yeah, and it we're changes there. things. And we're there. Yeah. And it's, it's not optional. It's required now. We need, right. this, we need this transcript from a conversation from the President of the United States to the President of Ukraine. And how, what a sad day that is that we require that transcript. And it's like it's that, one of many, many things that are sad about right. Trump's presidency. He, how he's divided us. Right. Even another president, even Biden, a much sweeter guy, um, could he fix that? Would he make all those divided camps come together again? Not right away. And what about all the countries that he's divided and the, yeah. the allies that he's cost us? Can Biden put that back together again? Not clear. What about no. the damage he's done in, in the Middle East and in, um, in North Korea, China, South America? You know, can, he, can somebody put that back together again? It took us World War II to create this leadership. And all the years thereafter, imperfectly sometimes for sure, but the fact is that um, 
it's not like we have it presumptively. We had to earn it somehow. Um, and just because we have some money, which, which may be going away with Trump's trillion dollar deficits, um, you know, we, we may not be able to get it back. So this, this affair, which could, should cost Trump his presidency, is so important. Uh, and I, I join you, Tim, in the thought that the Democrats have not done a good job at dealing with him up till now. Um, uh, they had the majority since January in the House. Uh, they could have done stuff, and they didn't do it. And now the question is whether they're Akamai enough, whether they got the political will enough to carry this forward. The test is on them. Uh, and if they don't do it, and if he um, disregards it or distracts us or finds you know, something to upstage it, which he will try to do, um, right. you know, the country is in trouble. It's not just Biden. The country is in trouble, and right. for that matter. The world is the in world trouble. The world is in yeah. trouble. I was happy to see Nancy come out um, with that somber kind of an attitude. She wasn't all, whoopee, let's go get him. Yeah. You know, and there's I nothing was, to celebrate there's here. There's nothing to celebrate here. And that's why I was really, I was really glad to see her come mm -hmm. across that way and to present it to the public in that, you know, um, in that manner. I thought it was really important. Thank you, Cynthia. Cynthia Sinclair. Tim, Tim uh, Apicella, thank you so much. You thank, you, thank you, Jay. We're going to do this next week. Next now that week. we're back together we're, again, right? Yeah, we're back together again. <laughs> back together and, and being sad. Yeah. And being sad. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jay.